try to get the Radiance up on the the Lone Druid, and they've got a really good high ground hero to accomplish that. That's why uh, heroes like Tidehunter and Void, I would have been okay with either because the Void breaks BKB, and uh, the Tide can just kind of fight. It's really scary pushing up high ground against the Tidehunter, right? But I think Troll might actually pay for... Yeah, he's Trying dropping for this. really low. Yeah, that that's is gonna be fun. Nice that. that was that was like really obvious when Mineski started showing forward that Tide Hunter was gonna die because uh, the Tusk is such a great level one here on the. Crows, uh, this this bounty hunter pick is really working out well well for them because part of this Lich dual lane mid scenario was him denying creeps away from the OD but also stacking. They're already gonna have a crack at uh, at Ben Hur. That Orb of Venom doing some work. He's gonna actually very far up, but it's still not enough. Kurog has just barely enough damage to get the kill before he reaches the T1 tower. A lot of options. When you're running around with a smoke this early on the Lich, are you just buying this thing just so you can make sure you got more of them later into the game? Or should Vash be looking to rotate and do something as this Lich? You're putting it on cooldown. I don't think there's any reason for him to rotate right now. Uh, Liquid really forcing that top lane with the paralyzing cards. They're getting pretty close. The resummon of the bear to try and find another hit. And as, uh, well, one more from the bear would do the work. When Tubman's come in very, very deep, they find the kill, but there's no rotation from Mineski to really punish him. But Tubman should just be able to safely walk himself out of here. So they have to accept the fact they're not going to find the kill, but they do force mind control all the way back to base. Yeah, it's just not being effective enough, I would say, in comparison to. Um... They're going again on mid. Ben Hur being attacked up. There's no astral imprisonment early level up. In fact, it's just a 202, and that's giving Fada just enough damage to get the kill before reaching deep in bounty hunter. Like you're giving the bounty hunter free levels at this point, where wow. he should Potato. be sapping. You're in so deep that door breath very much off target. So my control will freely walk down. Jirax will TP in, and Kuro already started the rotation with the early point up in Maledict. They're going to be able to lock oh. in Rage Potato. The shards from Jules try to actually create a little bit more space with the Shuriken toss. Now they also bring in more help with the paralyzing cast from Jirax. Able to reach out and find the kill, allowing their mind control to gush over onto Boccarino. They're going to snowball over, picking up the, uh, the Nature's Prophet, but there is no real way to get out of this one alive. They just try and bring Jirax down with him instead. Almost able to achieve that task, getting blocked up by the Treants himself. Jules couldn't reach over to Jirax, who will hide in the tree lines. These Treants are still looking for their opening target. But Jules, he's ticking down here very far up. Now he actually sees Jirax as he snowballed to him. No, he snowballed over to Kuro instead. And now allow the last to attack to come in from the Bounty Hunter, finding him himself a kill with a dust up Kuro still visible then he will burn out now to this Jakiro underneath that side shop mind control should be able to just retreat himself out of this one as well unless he wants to continue continue the fight he doesn't know it but Jerix is still there he's a free kill essentially if uh, Raging Potato just went for it oh he's gonna wait for the creep wave to skip past first and then run past and that's why he places that ward down there it looks like Manessi you're gonna try and force onto this tier one tower in the bottom lane mind control and Kuro are the two here to defend it, and again, they're going to bring in Jirax to also help out. But with that Liquid Fire and uh, Dual Breath, they take a lot of damage just staying in close, but now maybe they do actually find the kill over on Raging Potato. The Shards are pushing back out a little bit further. One more Liquid Fire will ensure the kill on the tower. Jirax is going to time it perfectly to get the Denial off, and this will actually mean that while the Tier 1 tower does go down, it is denied, and you lose your safe laner, and Fada has to find himself a haste rune. So chasing in Jules. Jules actually just stops walking for a moment to pick up a TP scroll, and now he's also down for the count. I mean, that was a moment where, like, Jakiro knew he, like, started running back, and he realized, I'm not getting out of here alive. This roaming support around, this is the benefit, is that he can rotate to the soft lane and help out and just slow down the tower pushes and make them even more dangerous. They're going mid. Sentries are down, won't really matter, you can see Kuro coming, the result will still be the same. Alchemist, even with his chemical rage, that's going to be a death. I like this choice as well as the... For this one, Matumman's actually rotating into the mid with the Dire Observer Ward, they're going to see that Courier making his play out. They're going to sandwich him here. Straight on top of the Lich. With this kill, should have enough uh, space now, they can also just attack into the tier 1 tower. And clean out any of these close camps as well, which the Alchemist may have been hoping to farm up later on tried to use his ice path to buy that small little space for the liquid fire to tick through it but it just didn't work. The supports just weren't in the right position. They had to be back in the Jakiro up there. They needed to be able to, to force an initiation if liquid did some sort of like half contest at that top lane because you know the alchemist needs oh, to run away. But... Ocarino. Yep, the man should catch him out. Quick kill, burns a drum charge as well and with no nature's profit build, next item. build that veil. If that were like an ember, I'd be like, that's fantastic. They just created two spots on the map, but at bottom, he's just going to get gone on by the OD. 
And he's going to run into the tree lines, but he can't make the Fog of War in time. And Matumba has now arrived with that fresh Radiance on his bear. So Raging Potato into the trees, no TP for 23 seconds, and no friends coming to help him out either. So he'll end up going down. He'll ice path once more, at least catching out three, but the orb attacks just do so much work. And you're going to lose your Tasker in the top river. He snowballed to buy a little bit of time, but Jules will also take the fall. We're 213 on the board. Team Liquid looking amazing, and they're looking to actually push even further with tracks now kicking in. All these kills are working so much better for Team Liquid, and even the long range paralyzing cask. Luckily for Vash, it won't bounce to him, but Fada just triggers Drum Charge. He's got himself an Aegis the Immortal, so he blinks aggressively in. That ulti brings Vash to 10 HP, which is barely not enough to find the kill. But that at least sends a very strong message to Mineski. And what do they even go for? Like, killing off the bear is almost an impossible task at the moment, but... Kura coming in very close. The smoke isn't going to break, but, yeah, when you're tracked up... Now the drum charge triggers, Fata's going to come in from the side, and who's his primary target? He just goes on top of the Lich. You've already lost an HS Prophet further down south as Kura keeps his tracks in. Is there an entangle? Tuska still keeps the run going. Now that Lich is going to start bouncing around. Kura can be careful, he's going to drop low. But then the creep wave just starts to soak up more, but it's Raging Potato who finally gets something back. Slipping in through the rear. He may not be able to survive for this. He liquid fires, doesn't have dual breath. He macro pies as much damage as he can find on top of Fada. Who doesn't care, remember, he's still got the Aegis the Immortal. So Raging Potato, your number one position. He'll burn an Aegis the Immortal, and the cost of it is his life. While Matumaman is just on objective-based gaming. Tier 2 tower belongs to him. Two things I really want to point out about this game that, for me anyways, usually signifies how a game is going is but Liquid are just playing off of that because they know that they don't want a team fight, they don't want to get into a full five man engagement. So the Tide just continues to farm during this time period. And this is the correct uh, response by him, too. Uh, secondly, I mean, Liquid just have all the space in the world. They've taken control of this bottom tier, uh, tier two area. They've got the jungle on lock. Fada's just doing whatever he wants in this game. And Liquid aren't even really playing so much as a team as they are just kind of can't survive. Like, everybody has like a thousand HP on the side of Mineski. What are they supposed to do in these big teams? They found Koro. This is at least the first break they're really going to get. Koro was the only one to die previously. Looks we'll like he's going to die again. Mr. Kuro will find that kill. He will just need the sentry wall, but broke their smoke oh, gang. Oh, bottom. They might get something going. Oh, yeah. Fada. There's your imprisonment, but he's locked inside the sprout. No way to cut himself free. Can't blink himself away. But Matumpa's coming in, and mind control. That ice path actually stops him from blinking forward to going into the ravage, but now nothing stops him. He goes in. Here's practically all of Maneski, apart from Ben-Hur, who has to turn around for this concoction. He's waiting the longest amount of time to do it. But unfortunately, he's just lost his teammate while it happens. Mind Control can Anchor Smash, and now this Alchemist does minimal to no damage. The Shards will keep Liquid here, but at the same time, I don't think Mineski, that's a real big advantage for them. Their only issue is they're being pushed on all the other sidelines. That bottom tower's at 7 HP. Radiant like, Matumba Foster just leads it there, so he has to, so Mineski have to keep some level of player down here, or they deny the tower. Yeah, Meanwhile, the Tier 2, okay, there's your Imprisonment. They're going after the, after the snowballed up Tusker and drag him back up to his own tier 2 tower. But Jules, for the ice path, hits by control. He'll get the X smash off. That's a nice death wall from Jirax. He'll end up going down thanks to the Lich Ultimate. A Ragey Potato on the run out of here. A Yule Set will save him from that one last orb that came out from Fada. But Fada splinks forward. You can't escape. This team is just so good at positioning. And Matubman has now finished off the bottom racks practically by himself. While the rest of Neski were distracted on the top lane. I sort of think Mineski should have just all in for that top fight. They need, so they're just going for the <laughs> ultimate, you know, armor increases that allows them to have sustain to push high ground and end this game. So They've got Vlad's too. I, I don't yeah, think I've seen Vlad a Shiva's bounty leaves. hunter before. Especially as your first major item, Fada. Playing around with Boccarino, throws the ulti down. The one charge will keep him alive and Jules, well, will be the sacrificial lamb as Jakira try to run in, gets entangled, the Ravage will hit, and this may be the final nail in the coffin here for Mineski. They've lost so much, and they're going to tap it out. Game number one of this best of three will be going the way of Team Liquid, taking just under 23 minutes. But damn Liquid, they are rolling in the dark. ...well in the first 10 minutes of the game, and it was over.